So what is the role? Let me share my slides. Yeah. Of fascia in human movement orchestration. And uh, I will focus in this lecture more on the elastic recoil capacities and look at them in more in details, which components pl play what role in this movement orchestration. And I have been involved um, in the group that created a, a first systematic approach. How could a systematic fascia oriented movement uh, training look like? And to my knowledge, that was uh, for the first time happening after the 2009 Congress where Yasuo Kawakami, shown here on the right, showed us his ultrasound videos from living people. And that basically changed a lot of insights. And uh, after that meeting, uh, several of us, and that included Tom Myers, it included James Earls, Devo Miller, and half a dozen others, we got together and discussed, does it make sense to develop a systematic fascia training with a similar focus and similar justification as you have a systematic bodybuilding or muscle fiber hypertrophy or systematic cardiovascular training or other training protocols. And we came to the conclusion, yes, it makes sense. But that was inspired by these ultrasound examinations where he showed what happens when you do oscillatory bouncing movements. For example, if you are jumping with your legs, and uh, as he showed here on the video clip I got from him on the very right, is so if you do bouncing movements, the muscle fibers do not change their lengths very much. So they are almost like my finger up here. It is keeping almost the same position, but the collagenous fibers are doing a lot of length changes. And that was revealed here by ultrasound uh, video clips from people who are doing jumping movements in which the sarcomeres here, the muscle fiber units, do not change their lengths very much, but the upper neurosis, the continuation of the Achilles tendon, has a much longer uh, elongation as is shown here. And uh, so it means the elastic recoil has a lot to do with the elastic storage capacity of the collagen fibers in the tendon and in similar collagenous tissues. And that had been be before discovered in Australian kangaroos that can jump 13 meters. And when they wanted to understand how they do that, they of course looked first at the muscle fibers, whether they have more fast twitch muscle fibers, or maybe they have a unique kind of uh, muscle fibers that can contract more rapidly, but that was not the explanation. But when they looked at the Achilles tendon, they found exactly that high storage capacity that we had described. And later they also found it in gazelles and in horses and then in homo sapiens. So that is very uh, distinguishing feature between our Achilles tendon, but also patellar tendon and our other primate uh, relatives. So chimpanzees, orangutans, etc. They don't have that storage capacity, that elastic recall capacity, and that, changes, and that changes our locomotion. And uh, that was not only discovered in the Achilles tendon of Homo sapiens, that we have such a higher storage capacity. Uh, it was also shown for the very important IT band. Uh, our IT band compared with the chimpanzees, they don't have an IT band, but a similar structure, has a much higher storage capacity for kinetic energy. Storage capacity you measure, for example, if I have several balls and I let them drop on the, on the ground, the ball that recovers to the original height or almost to the original height has a higher storage capacity, not for temperature, but for kinetic energy. And that, that's what they measured in the Achilles tendon, but also very importantly for the IT band. So that has been a, shape, a, a very important factor in shaping our, uh, our human body as, as homo sapiens. Uh, but in order 
to activate that storage capacity, you apparently need to have uh, fascia highly developed as a proprioceptive sensory organ. Mm -hmm.